Hello, my name is John Mayer, and on behalf of the University of Pittsburgh Clinical and Translational Science Institute, I'd like to welcome you to the announcements of our Pitt Innovation Challenge, PINCH, 2020 winners. The pandemic this year prevented us from having our traditional final dinner event where the finalists present their projects in a pitch format to the judges. This year, instead, each of the teams in the finals prepared a brief video, and that's preserved on a web page that you can go look that also has other information about their projects. As further background about our program, here are some of the past participants and winners that can tell you about what we do. The PINCH program opened a whole array of doors for us, and I hope it does so for you, too. I received the PINCH fund in 2017 and start a new company, Thermopil. I wish this year's finalists the best in their effort to develop their new technology. I encourage you to be persistent, consistent, satisfied with incremental improvements while never letting go of ambition to accomplish great things. Either way, I think it is good to get the feedback and to help uh, shape your idea and move forward on that uh, path of developing that further. It was just an amazing experience, extremely helpful, and I wish all of you the best and thank you for furthering the cause of commercializing solutions to important health problems. It was a wonderful experience working with um, both the business and science advisors, and I recommend it wholeheartedly, and I wish you luck with your project. I hope you get one too. And I know to make it to the finals of the pinch competition means that you have put in an incredible amount of work, but you should also be so proud to be part of such an elite group of innovative thinkers. Without further ado, I want to begin by announcing the $100,000 award-winning projects in no particular order of their merit. The first team I will introduce is AWARE, Acoustic Waveform Respiratory Evaluation. This project also benefits from a $25,000 bonus award because of its pandemic impact. Respiratory diseases affect millions of people around the world. Just in the US, asthma affects over 25 million people. AWARE will leverage the computer power of current smartphones with machine learning algorithms that will learn what is normal, not only at a population level, but for each individual user. Unlike all existing devices, AWARE will not require difficult force maneuvers. It acts like a sonar that maps the airways directly. All you need to do is breathe normally into the small adapter connected to your phone, and AWARE will do the rest. AWARE will provide an easy way to monitor lung function remotely, with technology most US households already have. My patient with severe asthma could detect when an asthma attack is affecting her lung function and would recognize when she needs to take her rescue medications or seek help. AWARE uses a sonar approach that is different from existing solutions. It leverages technology that most people already have. It requires no forced breathing maneuvers, and it learns what is normal for each individual person. I've been taught that uh, AI needs over 100,000 data points. What do you need for machine learning data points for each of those patient classifications? One data point uh, will only require one cycle of signals that get reflected from the airway. So if you're doing 20 to 30 seconds per person, you're gonna get dozens of signals for that same subject at that one try. Even those 550 or 100 subjects will be repeating the test multiple times. And so we'll have dozens of intra-subject signals for each attempt. The next team I'd like to introduce is Replica. 3D sculpted cartilage implants. Replica is a prefabricated ear implant made of processed human cadaveric cartilage, sculpted into its final ear shape using our customized 3D freeze micromilling process. Basically, we create a design based on patient imaging, which is translated into computer language. Using high precision burrs, our modified micromilling machine can sculpt the shape of the design from a block of material, in this case, human cartilage. The result is a perfectly shaped ear implant. The patent pending replica ear implants could be custom made off the shelf and ready for implantation. The biologic cadaveric cartilage tissue avoids synthetics and eliminates donor site morbidity while still decreasing operative time and cost, number of stages, and the difficulty for the surgeon. To date, we have successfully produced prototypes in different materials. Most importantly, our novel process for customized cartilage implants could be used for a wide variety of applications, ranging from nasal reconstruction to airway surgery or other areas where cartilage is missing or defective. 
Do you think surgeons are going to miss the artistry of carving cartilage, whether it be cadaver or autologous, uh, to reconstruct that ear? If you talk to anyone who does this regularly, the artistry, quote unquote, of ear carving is the thing that they hate the most out of this process. <laughs> what we're ultimately interested in is providing better results that are safer for our patients, not so much the self-gratification of the creative process. The next awardee is lung target. The most common genetic disorder affecting the Caucasian population is cystic fibrosis. A chronic lung disease complicated by repeated lung infections, ultimately leading to a need for lung transplantation without which these patients cannot survive. Even in the era of modern medicine, median survival is estimated to be 39 years. Our innovation directly targets this degradation marking step through intravenous delivery hopefully resulting in fewer chronic lung infections for people suffering from cystic fibrosis. This would lead to increase in lung clearance for people with cystic fibrosis instead of suffering constant lung infections. Our work has the potential to open new therapies for cystic fibrosis, serve as a proof of concept and open avenues for treating other chronic lung conditions such as interstitial lung fibrosis and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Is this something that you anticipate administering via an intratracheal route in patients down the road? Yes, uh, the lungs are unique in that they have two different routes of uh, administration. We can do intravenous or we can do uh, inhalational route. Uh, depending on the application, one will be superior to the other one. Now, it is my honor to announce the group of projects that will be getting $25,000 to do their work addressing the problem they've identified. In no particular order, the first award I want to announce is Transplants for Kids. Together, we've developed a strategy to deploy a clinical decision support tool that will increase the efficiency and utilization of donated organs and help children get the optimal organ for them. Children are one of the most at-risk patient populations and nationwide, there are wide variations in organ selection, evaluation, and surgical protocols that result in wasted organs and lost lives. Our solution is a software organ evaluation module that does two things. It merges innovative donor and recipient matching algorithms with predictive analytics to provide clinical teams, our users, the recommendations that they need in the palm of their hand to help match the right organ with the right kid at the right time as fast as possible. Donor and recipient information will flow in a HIPAA compliant fashion and allow data-driven, more rapid decision-making on organ acceptance that's based on key transplant center and patient characteristics. And hospitals will use this to improve efficiency, communication, and the user experience among our organ referral professionals. What kind of outcome measures will you be looking at in that compressed timeline to demonstrate benefit in this rare population? The outcome measures for uh, for this can be established within the time frame by looking at uh, not only the um, the waitlist mortality, which would take a larger sample time, by looking at efficiency of decision time, which is the critical time factor, reducing time will save lives. We can measure that in that, in that sample size quickly. The next team I'd like to introduce is Salt Stoppers, Novel Depression Therapeutics. This project also benefits from a $5,000 bonus award. Our strategy elevates serotonin in the brain by inhibiting the enzyme SALT1A3, which inactivates roughly 80% of serotonin. This strategy has never been tried because it has not been possible to inhibit a single salt without also inhibiting other members of the salt family each of which has its own disease linkages. We've discovered that each salt harbors a unique binding pocket that can be used to inhibit the enzyme. This video shows one such inhibitor, compound 13, which we designed to bind to the salt 1A3 pocket and to prevent catalysis by stabilizing the closed form of the active site cap. Is this potentially a platform for uh, a therapeutic for other conditions? There were recent papers in Nature that are identifying these kind, these enzymes as major targets for cancer. Each of the 13 sulfur transferases that's expressed in humans operate its own metabolic domain toxicity. Each of those domains has its own disease linkages, right? So yes, we think it's a, a fairly broad platform. Next, I'd like to introduce 
thinking and speech. Thinking and speech is a cognitive intervention. It helps children with autism develop inner speech, the voice in our head we use to think. The ability to use inner speech is critical for problem solving and is the foundation for effective self-regulation. But research shows that children with autism have underdeveloped inner speech. With your help, we can move this forward along three paths. One, remote training. Our research study showed that graduate students could be trained to use thinking and speech. Now we need to standardize that training so that other professionals can use thinking and speech with the same level of expectations of success. Two, dissemination. With this award, we can design the IT platform we need for large-scale adoption by professionals anywhere in the world. And three, research. We could conduct a larger randomized control study that we will need to obtain NIH or NSF funding for large-scale clinical trials. How long are you going to run this trial and uh, what kind of outcome measures are you going to use to determine that your approach is superior to the gold standard? We want to make sure we're going to get the kids to eight weeks, eight sessions of therapy that might take 10 weeks that might take 12 weeks um, but we're going to we're going to um, do our measures before they start during after and then as a follow up the next awardee i want to announce is sevo at sevo our vision is to make neural technologies accessible to everyone starting with making eeg more accessible to black people with coarse and curly hair Electroencephalography, or EEG, is a non-invasive neural sensing technology that depends on reliable scalp contact to record neural activity. While straight hair can be moved out of the way, the coils of black hair can act like a spring, pushing electrodes away. This restricts 1 billion black people globally from reliable access to EEG. Rather than treating the hair as an obstacle, our solution leverages the properties of curly hair and does so in a dignified and culturally competent way. At Sevo, we've developed novel electrodes and hair braiding techniques that improve scalp contact, lowering impedance, and improving signal quality by 15 times. We are a team of engineers, clinicians, designers, and data scientists who design our solutions holistically with the human experience in mind. Because of that, Sevo is the first systemic solution to this problem. Thus, we have no direct competition within this niche. Is there a sense that you have about what the markup of the SIVO costs compared to the existing solution? Our margins are going to be fairly large because it's a fairly simple piece, but the price of the per piece is going to be fairly low and shouldn't uh, drastically change the, the price of, of hooking up an electrode. The next team I'd like to announce is PSEF, Patient Specific Expandable Foam. This project also benefits from a $5,000 additional bonus award. Patient-specific expandable foam is a novel wound vac therapy that can perfectly fit any wound. Currently, complex wounds are a devastating problem to the healthcare system. Negative pressure wound therapy is the mainstay treatment of chronic and traumatic wounds and is utilized by a vast array of medical and surgical subspecialties, even extending into the military medicine. Our novel solution entails a porous polyurethane foam polymer that can be directly sprayed onto the wound bed and actually expand to fit the patient's specific wound geometry. The impact of this solution is threefold. First, the application of the foam would be significantly easier. Second, it would provide a better seal and a more uniform negative pressure across the wound bed, increasing its effectiveness. Third, it would allow the application of the negative pressure wound therapy to an expanded set of anatomic locations. This is a simple solution to a devastating problem that currently relies on 30-year-old technology. Is the foam going to be as safe and non-toxic in its uncured state as the final product? This is a one-shot material. So it's really essentially the expansion and release of what we call the blowing agent that leads to the cure. So you have something that goes from a liquid to a solid, but it's not really based on the chemistry per se. Next, I'd like to introduce Lemur DX. Our team has developed Lemur DX, a smartwatch application to identify children with clinical levels of hyperactivity using sensor data from a smartwatch. This sensor data is then used by our custom machine learning models to contextualize the child's motion and activity levels and identify patterns of activity that are characteristic of ADHD. The sensor data provides critical contextual information that places the child's activity level and patterns within the context in which it is happening. 
This solves the limitation of things like ActiWatches, which only measure activity and cannot reliably differentiate children with and without ADHD. To date, we have collected data using LemurDX from 50 families with very promising results. Using sensor data collected from the watch, along with contextual information, we were able to correctly classify children with and without ADHD to almost 90% accuracy. Ultimately, LemurDX will improve the accuracy of ADHD diagnoses and reduce the number of children who are either unnecessarily medicated or not receiving needed treatment. How does this technology add to that original diagnosis if the um, surveys are actually able to make the diagnosis themselves? The questionnaires are, are very unreliable. So they, we have both over diagnoses and diagnoses that are common. This provides an objective measure of hyperactivity. Really the innovation here is, is that we're providing an objective measure of hyperactivity, which until now has just not been used clinically to diagnose ADHD. Well, that's it. Those are our award winners for Pinch 2020. Our whole team has really enjoyed working with these project teams through this process and are really looking forward to the impact they're going to have as they work this year to solve the problems they've outlined. We're also really looking forward to Pinch 2021 and a different world when we hope it will happen. We'd really like you to consider participating in Pinch. If you have an idea for a problem you'd like to solve and a team you want to bring together around that, just go for it. There will be announcements in the spring of 2021 and we, we hope you'll join us. Hope to see you there.